Hello and welcome back. In this video, I want to shed a little bit more light on the Precision Boost C-State Boost Limiter I discussed in my Rafael launch video. Here's what I had to say about that limiter in the video. Now let's have a closer look at the Precision Boost infrastructure limiters exposed to the end user. Note that all of these limiters are present on Ryzen 7000 CPUs, although not all of them may be defined or active because some limiters are not relevant for desktop CPUs. C-State Boost is a specific boost limiter present on early Raphael engineering samples. Effectively, C-State Boost limits the maximum frequency when a certain number of active cores is exceeded. For the 16-core 7950X, the C-State Boost limit would force the CPU to run at 5.2 GHz when more than 4 cores are active. This precision boost limiter is not active on retail processors. While I was not wrong in stating that the C-State Boost limiter was not present on launch motherboards and launch BIOSes, I should have clarified that the limiter could re-emerge as it did with Agisa 1003. To illustrate the behavior, we rely on a small benchmark application called Knobbench, which was developed by Elmo Labs. Effectively, Knobbench helps us analyze the maximum boost frequency of our CPU. Knob, N-O-P, stands for no operation and is an x86 instruction that performs no operation. Knobbench iterates the Knob instruction and counts how many Knob instructions can be processed per second. As the knob throughput varies by CPU architecture, we can adjust the total knobs by an architecture specific factor. For Raphael, that factor is 2.5x. Ultimately, the knob bench output is a proxy for the effective clock frequency over a specific period. The knob bench version we are using in this video iterates the knob instructions on an increasingly larger amount of active cores. Specifically, we measure the knob throughput for core 0. First, when no other cores are active, then when core 1 is also active, then when cores 1 and 2 are active, and so on. Effectively, we measure the effective clock frequency of a specific core as more cores are loaded. This allows us to clearly show the behavior of the C-State Boost Limiter. We can use the information that we gathered with Knobbench to compile a boost curve for our Ryzen 9 7950X. We can make three key observations. First, with a Giza 1002, the CPU frequency drops off gradually as more cores become active. In contrast, with a Giza 1003, the frequency drops sharply when more than four cores are active. This is the precision boost C state boost limiter I discussed in my Rafael launch video. Second, disabling global C state control impacts the CPU frequency in both a Giza 1002 and 1003. The impact is most drastic on Agisa 1003 as disabling C states limits the frequency to 5.5 GHz. Third, for all Agisa and C state combinations, when 8 or more cores are active, the CPU frequency is pretty much the same as it is below the 5.5 GHz C state boost limit threshold. The reintroduction of the C-State Boost Limiter has a significant impact on the choice of our overclocking strategies as it limits the frequency to 5.5 GHz when more than 4 cores are active. As I explain in my Ryzen 7000 Scatterbencher guides, the most common method of extracting more performance from a Ryzen processor is by using the overclocking tools provided by AMD with their Precision Boost Overdrive Toolkit. The two most valuable tools are Boost Clock Override and Curve Optimizer. To keep it as simple as possible, Boost Clock Override or FMAX Override allows the user to override the factory programmed CPU core clock frequency limit between minus 1000 MHz and plus 200 MHz in steps of 25 MHz. For the Ryzen 9 7950X, the programmed maximum frequency is 5850 MHz. It is important to note that the override only adjusts the upper ceiling of the frequency and does not function as a frequency offset. Ultimately, the Precision Boost 2 algorithm still determines the actual operating frequency. Curve Optimizer is a tool that allows the user to adjust the voltage margin of each individual CPU core. It does this by offsetting the CPU core VFT or voltage frequency temperature table. 
The VFT table is a unique lookup table for each core inside your CPU that defines the required voltage for a given frequency at a given temperature. Higher frequencies or higher operating temperatures require higher voltage. The traditional approach for overclocking AMD Ryzen CPUs is to use a negative curve optimizer. Two things happen when you use a negative curve optimizer. First, you tell the CPU that it needs less of voltage for a given frequency. And as a consequence, at a given voltage, it can apply a higher frequency. Second, the CPU temperature will be lower because you use less of voltage at a given frequency. That extra thermal headroom will also encourage the precision boost algorithm to target higher voltages and frequencies. While both tools definitely help us to get more performance by increasing the actual CPU frequency, neither of them are directly impacting the C state boost limiter. Therefore, the only viable strategy for working around this C state boost limit is using a synchronous E clock. To illustrate this, we can use the same knob bench to measure the effective clock frequency. I show two scenarios. The first scenario is one where precision boost overdrive is enabled with a boost override set to plus 200 megahertz and a curve optimizer of minus 15 for all cores. The second scenario is where precision boost overdrive is enabled and we have set an asynchronous E clock frequency of 103 megahertz. As you can see from the chart, when we only rely on boost override and curve optimizer, the frequency remains limited to 5.5 GHz when more than four cores are active. However, when we use a synchronous E clock, we can affect the entire boost curve. On select ROG motherboards, however, there's another trick that you can use. Attentive viewers of my Rafael launch videos, and especially those that actually watch the overclocking example, will have noticed that I enable a very specific option called medium load boosted. The ROG OC team noticed the C-state boost limit during the initial testing with the engineering sample CPUs. They then developed a specific option to work around the boost limit and enable higher performance. Since the C-state boost was not present on launch motherboards and biases, I just ignored it in all of my overclocking guides. I will not dig into how exactly this function works, as I'm sure the ROG team considers this, at least on the very short term, some kind of a competitive advantage. Anyway, with the reintroduction of the C-state boost limiter in Agisa 1003, this option is now relevant again. When we enable this option, the boost curve looks as follows. As you can see, instead of the boost curve immediately dropping off to 5.5 GHz when more than four cores are active, the frequency boosts as high as the precision boost algorithm allows. We can now rely on just precision boost overdrive tuning to maximize the performance in all scenarios ranging from one active core to 16 active cores. While the knob bench results may seem shocking to some people, I must emphasize that this is an artificial workload. It helps us analyze the situation, but it doesn't reflect the real world performance impact. After all, with Notbench, we quite literally tell the CPU to do nothing as quickly as possible. The extent to which the C-state boost limiter will impact your performance depends on your CPU, the cooling system, and the workload. A good CPU is capable of boosting to higher frequencies. Thus, the more capable your CPU is of boosting beyond 5.5 GHz, the more you will see a performance impact from this limiter. Better cooling will help provide the CPU with higher boosting opportunities by keeping the operating temperature in check. The heavier your workload, the more likely other precision boost limiters will kick in and limit the CPU frequency. So while you may not be limited by the C-state boost limit, you may be limited by, for example, the voltage. To illustrate the performance impact, I use the 3 dmark CPU profile benchmark. This benchmark runs through a couple of scenarios as it gradually increases the number of CPU threads used. As a workload, it is among the lightest loads I include in my benchmark suite. Thus, the CPU should be able to boost to relatively high frequencies, even with many cores active. As you can see from the data, as long as you do not disable global C-state control, the performance decrease from the C-state boost limiter is relatively limited. Okay, let's wrap this up. Here are the six main takeaways from this video. First, enabling C-states is preferred 
as it provides higher performance for both Agisa 1002 and 1003. Second, Agisa 1003 reintroduces the Precision Boost C-State Boost Limiter, which was not present on the launch motherboards and BIOSes. Third, the C-State Boost Limiter prevents the CPU from boosting to over 5.5 GHz when more than 4 cores are active. As the Ryzen 9 7950X has a programmed maximum frequency ceiling of 5.85 GHz, it means potential performance loss. Fourth, on motherboards with the option, simply enabling medium load boosted works around the C-State Boost Limiter. Fifth, on motherboards that do not have this option, a synchronous e-clock provides the only viable overclocking strategy to increase the frequency beyond 5.5 GHz when more than 4 cores are active. Sixth, the real-world performance impact of the C-State Boost Limiter is minimal. That is because you need a good CPU capable of boosting over 5.5 GHz with many active cores. Furthermore, most workloads will trigger other precision boost limiters that restrict the operating frequency. Anyway, that's it for today. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Oh, and if you end up trying an ROG board with an Agisa 1003, make sure to check out the per core boost clock limit feature. With this feature, you can set a maximum frequency for each of your cores. When tuning with Precision Boost Overdrive, this can help prevent weak cores from trying to boost to the maximum program frequency while letting the strong cores boost to infinity and beyond. I don't have time to look into that feature right now, but I'll definitely revisit once more Ryzen 7000 CPUs hit the market. Anyway, now it's done for real. See you next time.